Today, let's see how a quick and easy fireball can be done in Unity. I believe this is a great exercise in case you are in a rush and need some quick and easy fireballs for your game. So without further ado, let's jump right into this. By the way, this is all available on my Patreons page, this entire project, and you will get access to many more assets for your games. Links below. And I'm gonna show you how to do it with the particle system and then with VFX graph. So, Let's begin by creating an empty game object, rename it to VFX underscore fireball, reset the transform, and we right click in effects create a particle system where the start speed can be zero, this doesn't move, it can move via script if you want. We don't need shape, we want this to spawn in the same position and not over time, so let's set it to zero and add a burst of one particle. And down here on the renderer, instead of a billboard, we want a mesh, we want to spawn a sphere instead of a cube. We could use the sphere that comes with Unity, but I would like to show you if you have Blender around, you can select everything with A, delete it, and with Shift A, you can add a UV sphere. And the cool thing is that you can control the amount of segments and rings you want, basically, if you want it low poly or high poly. I'm gonna leave it as it was, and then simply go to Object and say the shade is smooth. Let's just rename this to Fireball Sphere, for example. And with the sphere selected, in export, go to FPX, navigate to a folder in your project, turn on selected objects, and say the apply scalings is FBX all, and export as an FBX. Back in Unity, now you can assign it right here. And here we go, we have our sphere. The first thing I'm noticing is that it is way too big, so I'm gonna set it to 0.33. That's our first step, now we need to apply a texture to this. The quickest way to create a texture is with Material Maker, it's pretty cool. It's a node-based tool to create materials and textures. You can download it and once you open it up, if you search with right-click for Voronoi, you'll find this node and then you can control if you want to scale it in the X or in the Y, but essentially I'm gonna increase a little bit the intensity and the randomness. And then with right-click, export with 2048 by 2048 to my project as a PNG. Now back in Unity, we have the text, we just need a very, very simple shader that I'm gonna show you how to create. With right click, shader graph, URP and lit shader graph. We can call it the pan shader. Simply need this to scroll a text. And on the graph inspector, let's make sure we allow material overwrite so we can control all of these options directly on the material. Set it to transparent. On the backboard, we want a color property and then a text 2D for the main text and then a vector 2 for the main text styling and finally a vector 2 for the main text speed. Let's select the color and say it's in HDR mode and then choose white with alpha at 100. Drag the color, drag the main text. The main text needs to be sampled so we can then multiply the color with the main text. This is the basic setup of many shaders. And then we can connect this to the base color directly. Drag another line so we can split this and connect the A channel, which is the alpha, to the alpha. And that's it. Let me just assign here the Voronoi we just created. Let's take care of the tiling. Let's say the main text tiling is 1-1. One, one. That is very important. And now if we search for tiling and offset, the tiling controls the scale, essentially. And offset pans the texture. So, main text styling can be connected to the tiling and the main text speed can be multiplied with the time node. So, it is animated, essentially. Connect to the offset and that's it. Now, the main text speed will indefinitely scroll this texture. It will pan it, right? Let's save this. Let's go back to our scene. We want to create a material out of this shader so we can use it in our particle system. Right-click, material. I'm gonna call it the fireball toot, for example, drag it to my materials folder and, well, I'm gonna drag it to the particle system to see how it is. Let me just rename this to sphere, right? Okay. And yeah, we don't want those dark values, so I'm gonna switch the blending mode to additive. As you can see, whatever it was black, it becomes transparent now. Now, still on the material, we can say the main text speed is 0 0.5 on the Y creates this cool motion and if you want the 3D start rotation can be 90 so you can see this sideways. 
Now, if we select the color on the start call, nothing really happens. And that's a very easy fix. And in our shader, we need to drag this to the front and search for a vertex color so the particle system can communicate with the shader itself. Multiply these two together and replace the connections. Here we go. Save these assets. And now we have color in our fireball, right? The cool thing is on the color property down here, we can increase the intensity and only the intensity and it will become bright. I also have a global volume with bloom in my scene, by the way. But as you can see, the text doesn't look that good. So what I suggest you do very quickly is back here after the main texture, we can connect it to a power node and then create a float for the main text power with a default value of 1. A power node will control how much it dissolves. Save asset again. And now in our material we can dissolve a little bit our main text and then increase the intensity even more if we want. You get the idea, right? We have a fireball. Or at least part of it. We need another texture, so I'm going to use material maker again. But this time I'm going to search for shape and use this circle. As it is. But we have this black background which it is not useful. So to remove it we can use colorize and say the first key the alpha is zero which is transparent. And as you can see the black background goes away. Awesome. And now we right click in our preview to the window. We can export as a PNG once again to our project. I'm gonna rename it to fireball flare 02. Here we go. And this is all for a new particle system so we can have a dark background. We can call it flare this new particle system. Start speed at zero, no shape, emission, rate over time at zero, and a burst of one particle. Let's duplicate the fireball tutorial material, call it the flare tutorial material, something like that, and drag and drop the fireball flare 02. Say the main text speed is 00, zero and the main text power is 1, and the color, the intensity is 0. And very important is to switch blending mode to alpha so we can have dark colors. This is to create contrast with our sphere. Here we go. Let's make sure it's rendered below the sphere by saying the order in layer is minus one on the render. And now for the color, let's select something like a dark orange. Yeah, let me control the size. The start size it should be smaller. Okay. Yeah, darker orange, like a brown, something like this will look interesting. It's up to you as well. But you get the idea, right? We needed some contrast with the sphere. And to conclude this fireball on the particle system, we need some trails. Very basic ones. Right click, effects, trail. Let's call this one trail ADD, which is additive. You can preview it down here if we press restart. I'm gonna select line. It's only a preview, by the way. You can play it or stop it. And now we need a specific material. We can actually duplicate the flare tutorial material. Rename it to Fireball Trail Tutorial, for example. Additive, yes. And let's just go back to Material Maker for a quick texture. We can begin by searching for a shape node, polygon, but only with four sides, basically a rectangle. Let's increase this fade option down here and then connect this to a transform node so we can stretch it in the X down here, scale X, around 3.5, 4. Let's just remove the black background. We can copy this colorized node up here. Ctrl C, Ctrl V, connect to transform. Select the colorized node and export this preview to D, 2048 by 2048. We can rename this to Fireball Trail, for example, as a PNG, yes indeed. And back in Unity, now we can assign it to our new material, the Fireball Trail material. Drag and drop it. Let's make sure the blending mode for this one is additive. And then drag and drop it to the trail add. If you press restart to preview it, it's completely white. But let's copy the color from the sphere, open this color gradient of the trail and paste it to the first key. And the last key is going to be totally black. And the key up there is for the transparency. Let's also say the last key is zero. Let's cut in half the wide to 0 0.5 and the time something like 0 0.4. Depends on the velocity of the fireball, but it should do just fine. We select everything, go back and forward so we can preview this. Yeah, as you can see, this is a little bit dull. So I'm going to increase the intensity of the fireball trail material. And here we go. Duplicate it with Ctrl D for the trail AB, which is alpha blended. 
so we can render dark colors. Essentially, the difference is that this one is going to be larger, like 0 0.8 for the white, and the time 0 0.8, it's going to be longer as well. And the first key of the gradient, it's going to be pretty much black, and that's pretty much it. We just need to switch this material, duplicate it, because the blending mode is going to be alpha blended. Oh, and the color intensity should be zero, by the way. And drag and drop it to the trail AB. And here we go, as you can see. This is what we got. If we select everything, go back and forward. Yeah, if you are seeing this flickering between the trails, it's because on the trail AB, we need to say the order in layer is something like minus three. And the trail additive, minus two. So the trail additive stays on top of the trail AB, and all of the trail stays behind the sphere and the flare. And here we go, we got ourselves a fireball. Alright, looking good. If you want to improve your trails, I highly recommend this tutorial where you will learn how to create stylized trails. Very useful for this fireball. Let's have a quick look on how we can create a VFX graph version. It should be very straightforward with all the elements we have already created. So, on this empty game object, I'm going to call it VFX underscore fireball VFX graph. I'm going to reset the transform and in a folder now with right click, we want to go ahead and create a visual effect graph. Assuming that you have visual effect graph installed in the package manager, by the way. I'm going to call it VFX graph underscore fireball tutorial and drag and drop it to our empty game object, reset the transform and press edit to open it up. And the first thing we want to do is say that the spawn, instead of continuously spawning a particle, we want a burst. Let's remove this one and replace it with a single burst with one for the count. Remove the set velocity and the set lifetime so it lives forever, by the way. Down here, let's drag a new line so we can output a particle mesh and remove this output particle quad. In here, we can assign our sphere. We can already control its size with a set size. Let's say it's 0 0.33, the same values I've used for the particle system version. And up here, we can assign our shader graph, except it doesn't appear. It's a very easy fix. If we open our pan shader on the graph inspector down here, we can turn on support VFX graph. Save it, go back to VFX graph, and here we go. The pan shader, it's available. And if you don't see the shader graph option, you can go to edit, preference, and in visual effects, turn on experimental operator slash blocks. In this case, I'm going to use the same colors that I have for the particle system version. And I'm going to check the intensity that I have used for the material on the particle system. 3.9, all right. Here we go. Increase the intensity. Now, let's use the same texture, the Voronoi 02 that we have created for the particle system version. And I'm going to use the same values, 0 0.1 for the X in the speed and 0 0.5 for the Y and a power of 3. If you don't want this black background, you can select this output particle and on the inspector switch it to additive, the blending mode. Here we go. And now the cool thing about this is that we can drag another line for output particle quad. It's going to be our dark background, so it contrasts with our sphere. Let's just rename this to sphere and flare for the flare. I'm going to assign as well the same text that we have created for the particle system version. And then as you can see, if I move around, it isn't facing the camera. So I'm going to search for an orient block and use the orient face camera plane. So it faces, well, the camera essentially. Now let's control its size. It's very small. So with the set size, we can say it's something like one for now and then its color with a set color. I'm going to drag it below and I'm going to use something like 8, 103 for the value. As you can see, if you want, you can make it bright with intensity, but I'm going to use the same color palette that I've used for the particle system version. I'm actually going to increase the size 1.33 and if you look closely, the flare is in front of the sphere. The way we fix it is by selecting our VFX graph and on the inspector, in the output render order, push the flare up. So it renders before the sphere, as you can see. Here we go. Maybe it should be bigger. All right, so. And in this case, now I'm going to duplicate the trails that I've created for the particle system. Reset their transform. And that's it. Select everything to see how it is. And move it back and forward. 
And oh yeah, the color of the trail is a bit different. I'm actually going to say the fireball, the sphere, is a little bit more reddish, something like this. And here we go. We got ourselves another fireball. This time with VFX Craft. Of course, it was straightforward, mostly because all of the elements were already done from the particle system version. But you get the idea on how to create a very quick and pretty cool fireball in Unity with particle system and VFX Graph. So, I hope you have enjoyed this video. I made all of these versions available for you on my Patreon's page, link below, and you will also get access to a huge library of visual effects for Unity and Unreal. I want to say thank you to each patron that supported me last month, and as usual, a quick shout out to the top tier patrons, which are Alberto Sageras, Alan Alston, Andre Ripa, David Molina, Diego Marques, Lua Ama, Eric, Phoenix, Frosty Forty, Grub Lab, Ivan Jacobi, Casey Miller, Leandro de Ricio, Leon Holt, Matt Morn, Matthew Parker, Mihaita Nastase, Mike Bell, Oitsk, Owen, Osum Safuele, Pay Easy, Pierre Mario Roux, Pradip Sen, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, RVR, Shan Aguila, Barry Suta, Whatever Marta, Will Poilian, Vlad, Minja Kim, and Sang Yang Go. So, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this quick fireball tutorial and I hope to see you on the next one. Thank you. Bye.